Welcome back to SmartHelping.com. It's Friday morning, 10 a.m. It's been about three weeks since I last did a video. I know it's been a while, but here we go. So, uh, this is in Google Sheets. It's also the same exact model will be available in Excel. So, as soon as you make the purchase um, at SmartHelping.com, uh, you will get both the Google Sheet uh, link and the Excel link and then the Google Sheet link you can just uh, you'll hit uh, file make a copy and then you have your own version to play with so what this is is a sales hiring plan as well as an R&D customer service and miscellaneous hiring plan it is for a recurring revenue business, but you could also adapt it to any business uh, where you've got salesmen trying to sell stuff. Um, and basically what it does is the high level view is you're projecting out your expected revenues through this logic right here. Starting monthly revenue and then monthly or annual growth. And then based on that annual growth, You'll get a monthly growth, which the math behind that's kind of tricky, but uh, it, it basically starts with 100,000 and it grows it per month so that the annual growth is, is 100%. Based on the projected three month revenue, you will then populate your headcounts and cost per month. So, uh, so it's real simple here. We've got projected revenues, and now we want to say for every three hundred fifty thousand dollars of recurring revenue over the forward three months, how many account executives do you want? How many sales managers do you want? How many customer service reps do you want? Now, we could have done this another way, which we could have put in a number of this and then did a, the amount of uh, sales managers per these and the amount of customer service reps per these. But that is a little bit limiting because it requires you to have to have all you know, these top types to get to the bottom types. So I thought an easier way for a user to use this is you can simply, you know, if you're not going to use these, if that, that doesn't apply, you can hit zero, but then you can still have, you know, uh, sales managers and customer service reps and you can ma uh, manually define how many of those you need per the expected X amount of revenue in the next three months so this says in the next three months for every $350,000 in recurring revenue we need this amount of how to count and you know it's pretty straightforward some of the math uh, the percentages I'll explain get complicated but just in general, just looking at this, you could see um, here you can see sales manager. So this 1.02 means here's your, it's going to look at these three months of projected revenues here. Divided by how much uh, for revenue your, your X is. So this is just going to define how many units you need. Um, and then it just multiplies by how many units you have defined here. So you go, th uh, you see this is 357,000. You just, the math is just doing that divided by that. So it's just a little bit over one. And this allows for incremental change. So obviously you wouldn't have a uh, 0.02 of a sales manager, but it's just to show that, you know, maybe in this month you want two and, uh, or, you know, it's supposed to show even granulation over time. And that's just for, you know, that's good for situations where your growth is not, or your, uh, your revenue is not that big, not big enough to where you would have, you know, 100 here, then 105, or 108, 115. Um, so to deal with smaller numbers, there's incremental change. Uh, if it's bigger numbers you have, 
or, or, or larger counts of people you could just not you could just round these no problem so all you're trying to do here is is populate your hire or figure out your hiring needs based on your projected revenues and you're trying to plan for when you increase your revenues you want to change or adjust you know your head counts of different things and you're going to adjust the sales team differently than the R&D and the R&D different than whatever you put down here if anything and then you also have different types of you know R&D employees you have different types of sales customer success employees so this allows you to really just define all this and then figure out you know it adds everything up and you come to the bottom and you get a total cost of your team per month and then what that cost is as a percentage of revenues and you've got your total head count uh, in your average cost per person per month and this probably should be per person per month so it's a pretty useful tool here um, to use and it's not going to be used for this wouldn't be used for like uh, P&L projections this is only designed to help you with staffing st uh, you know hire it's just a hiring plan that's the main function of this tool so now the question becomes well what does this look like visually and if you go to the summary here I've done a bunch of charts let me zoom out a little bit here so we've got your sales team uh, headcount per revenue. So this is your, um, you know, how many salespeople do you have and what is the revenue at each of these different points. And you can see it's in compare mode. And it's got both the types of salespeople. Right now there's zero. Let's put it back in. Let's put, uh, say, 1.5 annual or 1.5 AEs for every four or $350,000 of revenue. Now let's go to our summary. There we go. So now we've got sales managers, the count, the count of AEs, and then the bar chart is the projected revenue. Uh, and then we've got monthly cost per hire type. So this is showing you again in compare mode here. You can see what are you paying per month for each type of employee over time. How is that changing? Uh, then we've rolled it up into departments, so basically four main departments is your sales team, customer service team, R&D, and other. And you can see how that changes. Then we've got monthly headcount per department. This is the same thing, but instead of showing your costs, you're just showing the count of uh, people in each each department and this is granular this is not going high level this is going low level uh, so you can see all the you got AEs, SDRs, sales managers in one, customer sort, support all your engineers and then I didn't add for the sake of uh, granularity, granularity the other type um, but it's easily done you just go to edit chart and you just go you just add three ranges and just copy what's up here into it and then just change the number you know to head, match the headcount so row 34 37 and 40 so I just go you know copy paste and change 28 to 34 and so on so it's not hard to update these charts at all uh, what else? Oh, here's here's probably, <laughs> I don't know why I put this at the bottom, but this is probably one of the most important ones is your monthly revenue versus your total monthly team costs. So this is how much you're uh, making in the current month and how much you're spending on um, your team costs. Now, why this is important, you can see how it's expanding, is because you're going on three-month forward revenue on what you're basing your costing needs for, but you're looking at your revenue for that current month, which is obviously before your revenue starts to go up, if, if your revenue is going up over time and at different rates. Now this creates a conundrum where you're like, well, look at this percentage. So my sales team is 25% of total revenue in year one, 
but now it's only 22% of revenue. Now, why is that going down? How is that possible if we're sticking to a fixed change amount uh, or, or count per every four revenue of 350000 Well, here's why. Because every year you can see we're adjusting the growth rates. So at 100% annual growth, if we look at our detail, you can see we start at um, 100, well, starting here at 100 and then going up per month to 105. And you can see if the growth is 100%, that means it should be 200,000 by year two. So if we go to our detail, you can see that is uh, month 12 is 200,000. So it's grown 100% over the year and incrementally each month, it, the formula knows how to grow each month in order to reach that annual rate. And that's some fun math. Um, but here's what happens. Here's why the percentages change. Now we're in year two. You see year two up here. And now the percent per month is actually slowed. Now what that means is if you're slowing the growth per month every month, that means the percent Whatever your your amount of uh, SDRs or whatever whatever your headcount is, is actually going to be different on a ratio. Just as if you're looking at the ratio compared to this month, compared to year one, and that's because in year one we're growing faster, so this is going to be a greater percentage of this. Now we're growing slower, so that means the revenue in three months is not going to be as high of a percentage as the current month and that's just the logic of it and it took me about 20 minutes of sitting here thinking about this to figure out why that is and then i had to mess with the percentages and i finally found it now if you were to say put a zero percent growth for each year after the first year you can see now look at there's no incremental change after the first year it just goes doop there's your incremental per cha change saying that you know now the the forward revenue is less as a percentage of the current revenue but then it doesn't change so then the ratio stays the same and then let's say we increased it so let's say we went 10 20 30 40 100 so we're growing 10 percent per year 20 percent per year 30 percent etc now look at well now it's actually going up because now the growth is faster relative to your current position so it's going to be a greater percentage in cost as compared to the current revenue and then you can see if you click on it here it shows each one and here's what the charts look like with that adjusted growth going up so it, your assumptions will define all of these things and you can see a nice detailed look at all everything down here total headcount average cost per month per person uh, total revenues, total team costs. Um, but yeah, that's it. And it's def designed to be simple. Once you get the math, it's pretty simple. You know, you're just looking at, um, you, you make these adjustments as as you see fit to meet your, um, what you expect your recurring revenue to grow at. Or, you know, and this doesn't have to be recurring. You could just define this as, you know, this is my three month expected revenue. It doesn't have to be recurring revenue. And, you know, you could say how many counts of all these types you want per whatever that is. Um, you can see average cost per person here. Now, this is to help. And just because of what I just explained about the forward months having a greater or less than, um, basically be greater or less than uh, the, the current month based on the percentage changes. That's why, you know, this 280,000, this is just to help you pace what you put this number at. So this is just taking your total costs. So it's just doing, you know, 150 times 1.5, 90 times this, plus 30,000 times this, plus this times this, doing all of these and saying um, your cost for three months at a time, at any given time for this is gonna be 281,000. So you probably want to make sure that this number is higher than this number. If it's not, you're going to be, like, let's put it at 250000 This means that, you know, we're actually saying we want to spend more money than we're making on these. Which, if you do, then if that fits your scenario, then fine. But if you see here, now look at these numbers are going to be, uh, this 
uh, projected revenue is actually below your total team costs. And again, that's why I said this chart is probably one of the most important. I don't know why I put it down here, but uh, that's to give you a, a better idea of, of planning this out, right? So let's put it back up. Let's say 600,000. Now, the higher this number goes, the more uh, margin you're going to have between revenue, less costs. And I don't even think I put a margin in here. No, I didn't. Let's add that. So we'll do total, or uh, let's see, revenue after team costs. Because I'm not really getting formal with the accounting here because this is not for accounting purposes or P&L. It's just, it's mainly to see your the effect of your team, the cost of your team uh, compared to your revenue. So there's our margin. Whatever that margin is not a, a specific, I wouldn't call it a profit margin. I wouldn't even call it a gross margin. It's just how much money is left after you pay for your team to pay for other stuff. There we go. And yeah, we'll probably put that in a chart. Let me pause this video. Okay, we're back here. Yep. So here's that. And you can see, obviously, as we have are growing faster um, through 1 through 5, the profit or the margin is expanding. Um, or the, the actual the, the dollar value of that margin is expanding. The actual margin is decreasing because uh, you're actually spending more as a uh, percentage of your current revenue, assuming you're trying to keep up with hiring people with your expected uh, forecast. I mean, you could probably restructure this. It would take customization, which I do bill out at 75 an hour to do any customization customization work. Um, you know, I can make this, you know, instead of doing your forward three months, it could be your forward 12 months. Uh, if you want a, a bigger runway to kind of plan things out, it just had to be a quick adjustment of the formula there. It wouldn't take time, but um, you're not stuck at three months. You are with the how the model currently runs, and I have not made that dynamic. And I'm not going to, but um, standard is three months, and it can be adjusted to whatever amount you want manually by adjusting the formula. Here's where you would pay for my customization services at smarthelping.com under contact hourly services. One through 10, I give a little bit of a discount when you get up to you know a higher hour rate. And then uh, obviously this model to purchase this um, template, it will be at smarthelping.com in the link in the description box below. Also, if you wanna explore more of my models, I have a bunch here, as you can see. Some of my most popular ones are, you know, doing budget uh, versus the actual variance analysis. Uh, the fitness center one popular. This mobile app with recurring revenue is probably the most popular. Uh, equipment rental. Inventory. I get a lot of uh, accounts payable receivable. And so hopefully this SaaS hiring plan is also going to be a popular one because I think a lot of businesses could, you know, use this and in, in, and get some value out of it. All right. That's all I got for you today. Hope uh, people, a lot of people end up liking this and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Hopefully it won't be quite as long as the last break. Um, I try to do one of these videos every two weeks. And again, this is going to be available in Excel as well as Google Sheet. And once you make the purchase, both will be sent to you. It'll be a one-time cost of $45. All right. Have a great day. Enjoy your weekend.